skip the insane monthly costs for a secondary fiber circuit that you won't use because you're using it as a backup circuit. In California, sometimes that monthly cost goes all the way up to about 2000 a month for a gig circuit. And what I'm going to do is show you this Morocco Internet Gateway. It was first released in 2019, and uh, what it's meant to do is serve as your secondary circuit without having to spend that extra money. The greatest use case for this is having it be your internet failover when your primary service goes down. When you get this online, you're using a SIM card, so it's going to use LTE or 5G as its backhaul. And so the Meraki Gateway, this one right here is the MG51E with the external antennas. You can also get it with the integrated antennas as well. This is going to use, this specific model uses dual SIMs, but I'm using one SIM card in it right now. And uh, I have an Ethernet cable connected to the WAN port of this device to my firewall. So it connects back to my network. And that's how uh, I get my secondary internet circuit from this Meraki gateway. It comes in a couple of different sizes. This one will be a lot larger because of the external antennas, but again, you can get it with the integrated antennas as well. You mount this in your network closet, or you can use the antennas to place them in a area where they'll get cellular signal, and then you can mount the unit itself in a more secure location. The greatest thing about the internet gateway is how easy it is to set up. You don't actually need any LTE or 5G technical experience whatsoever. You're unboxing it, you're claiming the device on the Meraki dashboard and inserting a SIM card, and that's about it. That SIM card that I have, I, I, I use it as uh, out-of-band management for some of my clients, and that can be as low as $20 a month for for data. And there are unlimited options, uh, unlimited data options as well. So it, even if you want diversity in the cellular connectivity, the MG51E has a dual SIM slot. So you can have uh, one SIM with one provider and the second SIM from another provider. Having the internet uh, the Meraki Internet Gateway as your failover device, that gives you that path diversity that you may not have in your area. For example, your primary ISP and any other ISP might be coming in through the same conduit, might be using the same um, backhaul internet provider or the same last mile provider. Uh, if you have a cable cut, you might be dead in, in the water because it's all using the same path. So you can use your primary internet service provider and then use the Meraki gateway as uh, another path out to the internet that won't be affected by any physical cuts or, or damages or outages. Uh, now I want to show you what it actually looks like from my end. Um, I can show you my setup and in my setup, I am using uh, a Palo Alto firewall that I've configured with Ethernet 1 being my, my uh, primary internet service provider, meaning my, my main home internet. Then I'm using Ethernet 4 is where I'm plugging in the Meraki internet gateway. Now I've set up path monitoring where if the primary gateway for my internet service is down, uh, after a few moments, it'll switch over to my other gateway of the Meraki Internet Gateway, the actual gateway IP address. So you can see in my virtual router right here, I have two default gateways. The one I'm using is the, of the NextHop 192.168.4.1, and it has a metric of 10. My secondary default gateway has a next hop of 172.31.128.1 and it has a metric of 50. So that's a much higher metric and my, my internet will primarily use this one first. And what I'll do is show you where I come up with this specific next hop, the 172.31 address. So if I, I go into my cellular gateway on the Meraki dashboard, you can see what my public IP address 
from the SIM card that I have active here in, in my, my gateway. Now, if we go over to cellular gateway and then settings, we can see that I can configure the deployment mode. Uh, I'm using routed mode, so I have a subnet configuration, and this is how I'm receiving that, that default gateway because in my firewall, I actually have it set to where, uh, if I go to interfaces and show you Ethernet 4, I have a DHCP client type set up and I've, I'm automatically creating that default route that is provided by the Meraki Internet Gateway. And I'm setting the default route metric higher than my primary default uh, route metric because it might pick one better or it might be the same and I might take this route out to the internet. So it's pretty easy to set up. You can set up port forwarding and traffic shaping and look at uh, statistics. We can take a look at how much bandwidth is being used by the, the gateway itself. If we go to uplink and scroll down, we can see what the signal strength is of the radio, who the provider is, and also some live data and historical statistics of what this cellular link has looked like over the last two hours, day, week, or month. So it's pretty good information that you can use to manage multiple gateways, uh, Meraki internet gateways uh, across the board. So it's pretty scalable in this way where there's not much configuration that you have to do other than plugging in that SIM card. Now I'll show you currently what my IP address is. Uh, I won't show you the full IP address, but if I re reload ipchicken.com, there is my IP address. What I want to do is set up a, a, a failover. So what I'll do is set up a ping to 1.1.1, and I will, on purpose, block my primary internet circuit. So we'll see here, I'm using Eero, so I can, I can turn off that, that interface, and there it is. It's going down. We'll see a couple of, of no response here from the pings and then it'll pick up again in a few moments as it checks. So there you go. We're back online. And what we can do now is go back to my firewall. If we look at the virtual router and the stats, if we look at the routing table, you can see that the 192.168.4.1 default route is no longer there because it's been removed because of path monitoring that I have in place. Now the path monitoring will show that it has failed for that static route, so that default route has been removed completely. And if we were able to check my IP address, I'll reload. It should now be the IP address from my SIM card, which is using the Verizon, Verizon network. There you go. That's the, the IP address. So overall, the Meraki Gateway, pretty nice device to set up at small business locations or any other location where you just want a simple internet failover, nothing fancy. And maybe it's just meant to provide simplicity across multiple sites that just requires that internet failover. Uh, all in all, this device retails for around $2,600, and you do need a license to use the Meraki Gateway, and so that retails for $852. And if you work with a with a great partner like like our company, Packet Six, you'll be able to get some extended discounts from from that partner. So, besides those two costs to consider, there's also the SIM card that you want to have with a certain plan. Maybe you want certain amount of data or unlimited data, but those can be as low as $20 a month. So that's the Meraki Gateway. Pretty easy to set up, in my opinion. Uh, I, I, I want to have one just to have backup internet, and I think uh, this is one great way to do it as long as you've got that 
cellular, the LTE or 5G uh, coverage in your area. If you like this video, you found it informational, please give me a like down below and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching.